the Bajaj Pulsar, one of India's premier products from the automotive sector. And this motorcycle isn't only sold in India. In fact, many countries abroad absolutely adore this bike. Today we're at Bajaj's test facility and today we have one of their latest 150cc single cylinder motorcycles. This is the Pulsar P150. A lot has changed in the world ever since the original bike came out back in 2001 and today we want to find out if the Pulsar P150 is the true successor to that bike. The Pulsar P150 follows the brand new design language by Bajaj which is shared with bikes like the N250, N160 and F250. As you can see, it is a very mean looking motorcycle and it shares a lot of design characteristics from the N250 and N160 motorcycles. If you can see, basically apart from the headlight, everything else on the motorcycle has the same panels as the N250 and N160 and that's because basically they are the same panels. What Bajaj have done is that they've made a brand new chassis but the design and the body panels are basically the same. Yes, the mounting points might be a little bit different but it makes the bike look very very aggressive. Coming on to the headlight, it's a very pretty looking headlight. A little less aggressive than the N series of motorcycles but it has a beautiful strip of DRLs and overall it's just a very attractive attractive looking motorcycle. It is a motorcycle that can fulfill the needs and expectations of both the younger generation and the older generation. The P150 comes in a couple of different color variations, five to be exact. You get racing red, Caribbean blue, ebony black red, ebony black blue and ebony black white. All of the colors look great. But we do have a soft spot for the Caribbean blue color, which was luckily the same color our test bike was. In terms of features, the P150 comes with single channel ABS. We are guessing a dual channel model is on its way in the not too distant future. The front gets telescopic forks and the P150 borrows the infinity display from the N160 and N250. And it also gets a USB charging port which comes in handy. Now let's talk about what makes the Pulsar P150 a unique motorcycle and the differences between the older generation of Pulsar and the latest P150. Well, first off, a lot of Pulsar purists will immediately notice that it does not have a dual shock absorber setup. And that is because Bajaj claims that the Monoshock setup is first of all more stiff, gives a better riding feel and overall is the better pick in terms of day-to-day -day usage. Now I know a lot of nitpicks here and there will be said because the dual shock absorber setup will of course be a little bit more comfortable but trust me this Monoshock setup is the way to go because it makes the bike feel much better and it helps improve the handling of the motorcycle. When it comes to the engine, it shares its block with the N160 motorcycle. It just has 10cc less of displacement. It makes 14 bhp and 13 Nm of torque, which is more than enough for your day-to-day -day usage. And trust me, it's quite a fruity engine. Makes some great noises from this underbelly exhaust over here. And in general, is a very peppy little engine. But what is more impressive about this engine is that Bajaj has completely re-engineered the torque curve for this motorcycle. After 3500 RPM, that is where you get 95% of the torque that is produced by this engine. And that makes it a very usable and a very maneuverable bike in city conditions basically because in our streets where there is tons of traffic and there are potholes on each and every corner, a lot of people prefer to ride in one single gear and this philosophy that Bajaj has done with the torque curve definitely complements it. But does the P150 live up to the expectations in terms of its riding dynamics? Well, the P150 feels like a completely new motorcycle compared to its predecessor. The new chassis means that Bajaj have saved a good 10 kilos in weight and the new monoshock suspension has changed the way the bike reacts to bumps and undulations. It is a quick and agile bike and even though it might not be as focused as the N160, the P150 definitely is up there in terms of handling in its segment. The power plant is healthy too 
and the revised torque curve makes the bike easy and fun to ride without having to squeeze the throttle all that much. The gear shifts are slick and precise once you get used to them, although sometimes shifting from first to second seem to be a little bit difficult without hitting neutral. Depending on which variant you get, the braking performance of our dual disc variant at least seem to be fantastic. Now let's talk about the differences between the two variants that you can get in the P150 which is the single disc variant and the dual disc variant. This over here is the dual disc variant and let me tell you about some of the unique things that only this variant gets. First off are the handlebars. This gets clip on handlebars whereas that one gets the normal handlebars. The seat is pretty different. This is a dual seat setup whereas the single disc variant gets only a single seat setup. The main and most noticeable difference by far has to be the tyres, 10mm of section difference between both. This makes this bike a little bit more grippier and a little bit, just that little bit more confidence inspiring in the corners. And apart from that, well, this is the dual disc, so it gets two discs, whereas the single disc gets only one disc. The Pulsar gets 260mm front discs and 230mm rear discs if you opt for the twin disc variant. The Pulsar also gets a brand new set of rims that look really cool and since it is the more practical Pulsar in the model range, it gets a center stand as well and kickstart. Some other useful stats that you would want to know is that the seat height is 790mm, the seating position itself is a little more relaxed compared to the N160, the fuel tank is a respectable 14 litres and with a fuel efficiency rating easily above the 40 kmpl mark, this motorcycle will do some good distance on a single tank. Moreover, the Infinity display has a distance to empty gauge, so you have a precise understanding of how much fuel you have left. Coming back to the original question, is the P150 the true successor to this bike over here? The original Pulsar back from 2001. Now, if you ask me, I think this looks miles better than the P150, but that has come down to modern preferences. And if you think about that, the P150 is an amazing motorcycle. The refinement is top notch. I don't think any other motorcycle in its price bracket can really compete with the level of refinement that this bike has. And apart from that, it's just a very versatile motorcycle, just like the original. Now, if you ask me which one I would pick between the two, I have to go with this. Just look at it. It looks absolutely amazing. Comment down below what you thought about the P150. What would you choose? Would you choose the original from 2001 or would you choose the latest and greatest Pulsar P150? Subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you in the next one.